So ladies and gentlemen, the prayers of the competitive community have finally been answered. And a major solo event has finally been announced. Solo FNCS, more properly known as the FNCS Invitational, is a new solo-only tournament announced by Epic on the 24th of April. And the competitive community couldn't be happier. So to put it simply, the FNCS Invitational will consist of a bunch of players who have played well in past FNCS tournaments. And then 100 people selected directly by Epic. But also there's one more thing. You. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. Yeah, with the hat on. No, not you, the other guy. You're going to be able to try your hand at joining this tournament, all right? So there are 100 more open slots for the tournament, guys, and the players are going to be decided through open solo qualifiers, split into two rounds per week for a few weeks. And real quick, before we get into this, if you guys want to find a pro coach to help you guys out and you want to watch exclusive content from pros like Mongrel, Benji, Fishy, and Letchy, or even watch live classes from some of the top Fortnite players and coaches, you guys got to head on over to ProGuys.com, man, where we have all of this and a lot more. Oh, and and uh, one more thing before we start, I'm really curious to hear, what are your predictions, man, for the FNCS solo tournament? More specifically, who do you think is going to take home the grand prize? Let me know in the comments. So the first tip might seem like common sense, and uh, well, actually it is. But it's something I see way too many of you missing out on, all right? And that's grinding solo arena and scrims. Guys, as much as creative can be great, all right? I get it, it's fun, and it helps. And you know, playing duos and squads with your friends is all good and fun. Nothing is going to prepare you guys for a solo tournament like playing solos. So the main thing with solos is that, you know, you can't rely on teammates. You know, you have to be 100% confident in your game sense, your mechanics, and your ability just to win. So many of us are used to just playing team modes, and there's nothing wrong with that, but solos is a whole different ballpark. And nothing is going to properly prepare you for what solo gameplay entails apart from grinding solos and simply just getting used to it. So if you're not already, hop out of creative, guys, duos, or whatever you may be playing, and start grinding in those solos. Come on now. Now who's with me? All right, guys, so next up, let's talk a little bit about drop spots. All right, now it's no secret <laughs> that finding a drop spot is very important. Yes, sets the whole game up. If you're just landing like wherever you feel like the entire tournament, or even like when you're simply playing scrims or arena, don't expect to do well. If you ever wonder like why pros always seem to make it to end game, okay, well, we're gonna make this very simple for you. First, obviously, you know, they have good mechanics and they can win fights. All right, that's that's a no-brainer. I get it. But it's still very important to know that, right? But second, arguably even more important than just having insane mechanics and a big brain, is that, you know, they always have complete and utter mastery over their landing spot. So if you ever watch pros play in a big tournament, regardless of which playlist it is, you're going to notice that they always seem to drop at the exact same POI, the exact same building, you know, even down to the exact same chest spawn and loot route. This is because pro players almost always take the time to just study their spot, find the most efficient ways to go about it, and then have practiced it repeatedly for months. So what I'm trying to say with all of this is to find a good landing spot that has everything that you need and master it, all right? Everything from where to glide from, you know, which specific part to land at, how to rotate through the spot, and anything else that you can even think of, all right? After that, practice it. Yeah, just do it over and over again. And you're gonna be so much more successful in early game. So you may think this is overkill, but I don't care. <laughs> because when you're in a tournament against some of the best players, these are the tiny things that make the big difference. So regardless of your input, you know, I don't care about your skill level, I don't care about your experience, man. Take the time and master a landing spot, like as soon as possible after this video. And then you're gonna survive into the end game so much more often. Okay guys, so our third tip is to work on your weaknesses. Look, I don't care who you are, you got weaknesses, everybody. I have weaknesses. We all have weaknesses. Can this kid stop shooting rockets at me? This game is so bad! This game is so bad! I swear to God! When you're playing the tournament, that's unfortunate for you because you're gonna kinda have to get better at that. If you're bad at rotating an end game, then I'm sorry to tell you, you're gonna have to work at that. So what I'm trying to say is like in a real tournament setting, it's kinda hard to just ignore like what you're bad at. So instead of just stressing all over it, take this time to just focus on what you're bad at and then make yourself good at it, all right? Because when it all comes down to it, man, your opponents, you know, they're not just gonna simply just let you play to your strengths, which is something you may be able to get away with in normal matches. You may get W keyed at crazy times, you know, you may have to play 
great hardcore placement, you know, have to storm fight in thousands of other situations, right? So work on what you're bad at. That way you're ready for anything that comes your way. All right, guys, so next up, this is very important. As if I haven't told you all this before, right? It's VOD review. Now, VOD reviewing basically means going back and watching your own gameplay. But I would like to give you guys another tip regarding VOD reviewing that you probably even haven't heard yet. So, you need to stick around for a minute to hear this. For those of you who aren't really familiar with VOD reviewing, let me make it simple for you, right? Basically, VOD reviewing is something almost every top pro does to figure out their mistakes and then they improve in those mistakes. It basically means like going back and watching your gameplay to see what you can work on, you know what I mean? Like if you rewatch your gameplay and analyze everything you do to find mistakes, you're gonna be able to improve so much more faster, man, than simply just playing the game like usual. Like we just think it's like by chance. Sometimes we just play and play and play and I get hit up on my Insta all the time. Hey, I'm trying to get better, but I'm not getting better. I've been playing and I've been playing and I'm playing. I've been grinding, but I'm not getting better. Well, my question for you is, are you VOD reviewing? Hmm. So the secret to VOD reviewing is to watch everything from your opponent's perspective alongside your own. This is because your opponent's perspective almost perfectly shows why you died. You know, if you missed a build, you know, you did a dumb edit, you know, made a bad rotation, you know, you get it, right? Watching it from your opponent's perspective, it's gonna help you guys see it so much more faster, right? And because watching it from your own perspective will only just show you so much. So next time you VOD review, try watching all perspectives and play, you know, to really hone in on what mistakes you made. Okay, so with that being said, everybody, that's going to be it for the general tips in this video. Okay, so next up, we're going to be going into more specifics on each platform. So in order, we're going to be going over console, all right, PC, and then all my friends on the mobile side. What's up? All right, that way, everybody's going to get some specific tips to come out with. Everybody's going to feel good. Everybody's going to be encouraged and pumped up to do this, all right? Anyway, so with that being said, the first specific section we're gonna be getting into is console. Yeah. But if you play something else, stick around, all right? We're gonna get to you shortly. Be patient. Because these tips can even still help you. First up, it is to consider upgrading your setup. Okay, so obviously if you're on console, your budget most likely isn't super high, but you know, there are a few quick upgrades that you can make to your setup to improve your chances. The first thing I would recommend is getting a gaming monitor if you don't have one set. If you play on a TV screen or a basic monitor, chances are it'll give you more input lag and the things you do will take longer to show up on screen. So getting a gaming monitor with like less delay will help you guys out a ton. The ones you wanna look for are the 60 Hertz monitors with low input delay. You know, a few monitors that are really good include the Acer SB230, 23 inch, and the ViewSonic VX2757 MHD, 27 inch. So the second setup upgrade I would recommend for console players or even controller on PC is to upgrade your controller to a Scuf or Elite if you have the money for it. So the paddles will honestly help you step up your game like never before. So if you can't afford that, another good option is the Strike Pack FPS Dominator, which is basically a small device with paddles that you can, you know, attach straight to your current controller, making it not the exact same, but close to a scuff or elite controller. Second up for console players is to practice box fighting. Yeah, like with the potential input lag and lower FPS on console, along with the fact that you're also on a controller. Box fighting is definitely one of the biggest difficulties you're gonna have. If you can, you know, become good at box fighting on console, you're gonna be pretty hard to stop. I recommend also doing Doing this against PC players because that's going to help you guys adapt to going against better players and a lot of the players you're going to run into an arena and in tournaments are going to be on a PC since there is no force crossplay in the solo FNCS. Alright guys, so next up we're going to be going over some tips for you PC players out there. Alright, and the biggest tip for PC is to practice in-game lag. So PC players tend to get pretty good ping and FPS, but in end game, that all changes. Your builds and edits will be delayed, your FPS will be lower, you know, it's gonna feel like, you know, 100 ping. It just won't be a good experience sometimes. So if you're on PC, try to grind out some stack customs and just adjust to this. So when those stacked end games come in the tournaments, you're gonna be completely ready to go. Honestly guys, with PC players, man, it is a bit tougher to give specific tips because we usually have the best of the situations, right? If you play on PC, practice end game lag and also just do everything else like grind your mechanics, play scrims and solos, play with and against good players, you know, you get it right, etc. You should be in a pretty good spot. All right, mobile tips, here we go. And wrapping it up with the platform specific tips, we got tips for you mobile players out there. What's up? Let's do this. Here we go. First up, mobile players. 
you gotta optimize and you gotta master your HUD, all right? Your HUD is basically the most important part of anything mechanical on mobile. Try to optimize this so you can just build, edit, and perform other important actions fluidly while being able to still see your kill feed, you know, you're still able to see your map and other info, and also, you know, where you don't have to play too much uncomfortably when trying to perform multiple actions quickly, all right? Second, if you haven't already, try to learn claw. The term claw refers to a way of holding your phone, tablet, or your iPad you know, where you can do more at once. There are multiple types of claw styles, but usually refers to using four fingers on your screen, on a phone, or on a small screen, or six fingers if you play it on a larger screen. For example, this is what four finger claw may look like, which can be used on basically any device. And this is six finger claw right here. So whichever you choose to play on, you know, just try to learn it and just get as much practice as possible with this so you can just continue to improve your mechanics, you know, all the time. All right, guys, so with that being said, it's time to do the recap. Okay, so first up is a common sense tip on the service, all right? But a lot of us miss out on this one, man. You know, it's to grind solo arena and scrim. Solos is a whole different ball game, and playing completely on your own is something that you have to get used to. Our second tip is to find a drop spot and completely master every aspect of it so you can just survive early game and make it to the end as often as possible. And possibly, you know, even grab a few kills off spawn safely. Third up is to focus on improving on your weaknesses. Okay, so when tournament time comes, nobody's gonna care like what you're good and bad at. Trust me, they're not gonna let you live, all right? So while you have the opportunity, try and improve on your weaknesses in game. Trust me, you could be great at everything else, but one aspect of the game that you aren't good at can have a devastating impact on your gameplay. So it's best that you work on that as soon as possible. And our last general tip was to focus on VOD reviewing, AKA watching back your own gameplay. To spot mistakes and issues that you can work on man is huge also watch it from your opponent's perspective as well so you can just see more details of the situation okay guys so for console our two biggest tips were first to consider upgrading some aspects of your setup so you know you can have just less input lag and better chances of just playing well and second to grind box fights Whew, because that tends to be like the biggest weak points for console players if you can get good at box fighting on console man you're gonna be a force to reckon with all right, so PC players tend to have, you know, it pretty good in terms of like most of the things. So our first tip for you guys were to practice in-game lag because it's just something most PC players aren't really used to. If you can still perform while dealing with lag in-game, let me tell you this, I don't wanna run into you. And finally, for mobile players. All right, guys, so most of the issues lie in how your gameplay is optimized, which is why our two tips were to optimize and master your HUD, right? And try to learn the claw style as well, you know, so you can just perform more actions at the same time when you play. These are two huge things that really separate the top mobile players from like the okay ones. So you better work on these guys and you're gonna be playing much, much better. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Love you guys, man, I'm rooting for you. Make sure to connect with me at your motivation guy. Hope you guys liked this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, yo, share it with your friends, man. We got so much cool stuff coming on over here on this channel, man. And if you want to support the Pro Guys team even more, consider using code Pro Guys in the item shop. And also, one last thing, be sure to check out the Pro Guys community Discord, which is going to be linked in the description. Come ahead out with the rest of the community, man. But anyway, we'll see you later. Peace.